Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do a sample with respect to the central limit theorem. All right, so here we've got our scenario. Jerry is out scouting houses for a client of his. Uh, he knows that the neighborhood that they want to get into has a mean of 250000 with a standard deviation of $50,000. All right, so let's start off with just setting up what our mean and our standard deviation note is. So we know that the population mean, or mu, is equal to $250,000. And we know that the sigma is equal to $50,000, just as stated from our problem. Okay, then we can go down to, so he wants to know that if he, uh, if he was randomly selecting houses, what would the probability be to find 35 houses with an average of, um, we'll say with an average less than, less than uh, 230, thousand dollars okay so let's start off there so we'll say n equals our sample size equals it specifically says that it's 35 and we want to know this x bar so our critical point is at two hundred and thirty thousand dollars okay so our first part one uh, let's just write out the probability statement. probability that x bar is greater oops no less than two hundred and thirty thousand dollars okay so we need to be able to um, we need basically one extra piece of information here and, and we have everything that we need because remember for the for our sampling distribution with 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 respect to X bar we need a couple things first of all um, we need to know is it origin is the original distribution normally distributed so we look at this and it says nothing about being normally distributed or anything else and we're like okay well if that's true then we need to make sure that the sample size is big enough and we know that the sample size needs to be bigger than 30 and is 35 so we're good central limit theorem will work with any original distribution as long as the sample size is sufficiently large um, now, if it was normally distributed, there is no lower limit to our sample size. Okay, so what we need to do is, well, let's do a first quick review. Remember, we're still doing z equals, and this is going to be x bar, hold on, x bar minus mu uh, divided by sigma, and then with respect to x bar. All right, so we need to do an intermediate sigma step. So we need to do sigma underscore x bar equals, and then that's going to equal the original sigma divided by the square root of n. And now we can, oops, I need to do divided by, not equals, divided by the square root of n, and hit enter. All right, so now we've got mu, uh, we've got x bar, and we've got sigma. Okay, great, so let's, we can calculate this out now. Go up to your R Commander, get it open, we can go to Distributions, we can go to Continuous and Normal, and we're looking at Probabilities. So our variable value, our critical value that we're interested in is 230,000, the mean is 250,000, and the standard deviation. Okay, easiest way to do this is to just come in, copy, and then come up here and paste. Okay, and we want the lower tail, so that's good. We've got that, and we can click OK. And we can look at the probability. What's the associated probability of being, of getting 35 less than $230,000? And we have a really small probability. We can just copy that and paste it in here. Paste. Okay, so then we also, we can go to the next one. He wants to randomly select 35 houses again. He wants to know what the, um, what the average, what would the average be for the top 13%. Okay, so we can do that. That's just with quantiles. Go to distributions, normal distribution. We can go to quantiles. And we want the top 13%. So I'm going to put in 0.13 and I want the upper tail since I want the top. Mean is still 250,000. One, two, three. And then our standard deviation, I'm just going to paste in what we had before. Oh, no, that is not our standard deviation. Let me go copy it again. Copy it. Remember, this is the, the standard. With this, You'll also hear this called as the standard error or the standard deviation with respect to X bar. 
because we're talking about the sample distribution. I want to paste that and I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to come over here. Now notice it only gave me out to one decimal. The reason is because our studio only shows seven significant figures. But a lot of times, you know, I ask for four decimal places. Here's how you can get around that. So in our studio, all you have to do is type in options and then we click digits and then hit equals and then we can just give it some more digits. So we need three more. So that would be 10. I'm just going to give it 12 for good measure. I'll hit enter and it doesn't look like it did anything. Trust me, it did. All we have to do is we're going to go back. I'm just going to resubmit or whatever. I'll just go back and redo it. We'll go to distribution, quantiles, click OK, and check it out. It gave me all the decimals that I needed. So if for whatever reason our studio doesn't give you enough significant digits, you can just force it to give you more to kick out the decimal places. And we can copy that. And we could paste that in here for like part number two. Okay, and then the last one, we said, what would the probability be to get an average of exactly 265,000? Remember, this is continuous random variables. So to be exactly a value, the probability is zero. So that holds over from as before as well. So, I mean, really, like this week is basically exactly the same as our previous sections. Um, the only thing that we have to do is this intermediate step of figuring out um, the standard deviation with respect to the sample means. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So good luck.